Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about Marvel's Civil War. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, and today we're going to be doing a review of Marvel's Civil War. So, this is an event written by Mark Millar, drawn by Steve McNiven. But before we get into all that, I'd like you to do one thing. Please subscribe. Helps me out, lets you know when I drop new videos. If you want an immediate notification, hit that bell, and let's get on with the review. So, Marvel's Civil War. Man, this is a fun read. Um, I have read this a couple times before. I read it in single issues when it was coming out. Um, this was in 2006 or 7. Let's look in the indicia here. Does it say? This was printed in 2010. Nope. I wish they would put it when these original issues came out, but they don't. So anyway, Civil War. This, uh, I really like this event. I think it's fun. Some people might find it like uh, you know, a little bit thin or whatever. I, I think it's really, really fun. And uh, I'm currently reading the Civil War Frontline series on my uh, iPad, uh, which takes place in between each of these issues. And that's a lot of fun as well. But this, that's not written by Mark Millar. This is. So this is the main event. And this is, I commend this event for needing everything you need to know, for having everything you need to know inside this book inside this event unlike blackest night or freaking final crisis or you know a lot of the other events that have come out recently when the book says civil war this is all you need to read to understand the event so this is one trade you can pick up a lot of the other tie-ins and stuff that are labeled civil war there's a spider-man trade there's a wolverine trade which is a story that i think is very good uh, there's a Fantastic Four one, a Thunderbolts, like literally every book in the Marvel Universe at the time had a Civil War trade. And what was fun about it is you knew it was a tie-in because they did this half cover thing um, for most of those books. The Wolverine one is about Wolverine going after Nitro after the events that happened in the first issue, uh, you know, where he blows up Stamford, Connecticut and kills a bunch of kids. Uh, he goes and hunts him down, goes to Atlantis, all these other places. R drawn by Humberto Ramos. Really, really fun. Uh, you can check that out. But this is written by Mark Millar. So Mark Millar wrote The Ultimates. He wrote uh, The Authority. And he wrote Civil War. He wrote Kick-Ass. He wrote Wanted. Uh, he wrote Jupiter's Legacy, which is a Netflix series. And I did a video, a primer for it, uh, a couple weeks back. You can check that out on the channel. So he's written a lot of stuff. And what I like about Mark Millar is that he's he writes for this blockbuster action. Uh, he writes for the blockbusters, basically. He's like he's like comics's Michael Bay, I would say. Um, he he throws enough in there to keep it interesting, but he also doesn't lose sight that there's something big that needs to happen each and every issue, and that is no more evident here than in an event book per se in Civil War. Um, really, really fun. What's also fun about this, what makes this big, is that you've got Steve McNiven on art. And Steve McNiven came to fame. He did some cross-gen stuff. I think he did Scion, I want to say, um, at cross-gen. And then he came over to Marvel. He did a run with on New Avengers where, uh, I think it was when the Century came back. Yeah, the Century story with Brian Michael Bendis. And then he went straight from that onto this. And then after, after Civil War, he did Old Man Logan, also written by Mark Millar. So... He did some Nemesis, with, which is a creator-owned thing with Mark Millar as well. So obviously him and Mark Millar got along pretty, pretty well. McNiven nowadays, you know, is doing some covers. I don't think he's as prolific as he once was. Uh, I certainly don't remember the last thing that I've seen him on. And if he was on something, he wasn't doing it month in, month out the way he was back in the day. So uh, also of note, and it doesn't matter now because we're like, you know, 10 years out from this thing, but... There was a huge delay in the middle of these issues. Like this book, book was coming out monthly, and then all of a sudden there was like a stop, and they said, "Hey, uh, Civil War." I don't know if it was like five or six, something like that. Said Civil War number five, say, is not going to come out until two months later. So there was a huge gap in between issues, 
and it was a big deal at the time. I remember listening to the Comic Geek Speak podcast. They did a whole episode about the Civil War delay, uh, and basically the delay was to let Steve McNiven finish the issues. And I think this helps with that. Like, ultimately, that was the right decision, because when you read it like this, and he's doing all, every single piece of the art. He's got the same inker, or I think I think it's the same inker on all of them. It's uh, oh, there's a couple of them, but Dexter Vines is most of it w- w- with assists by Mark Morales, Steve McNevin himself, John Dell, Tim Townsend. The same colors, Maury Hollowell. Um, the art is just consistent all the way through, and I appreciate that in an event book nowadays because w- the last time I think I read that somebody doing an event book all the way through was like what secret invasion was a little bit after this a dc event i don't know i guess blackest night but again all that story is not contained in that in the blackest night issues you got to go read green lantern as well much less infinite crisis has a bunch of uh different artists final crisis unfortunately has different artists uh wasn't jg jones's intent to jump off that series uh, you know, but he needed an assist later on in the back half of the issues. And then number seven for Final Crisis is done completely by Doug Monkey. Um, so, yeah, I, this is one of the rare ones, at least nowadays, that it's done all by one artist. I think now they plan these events to come out so frequently that they have a multitude of artists doing on off different shifts. Like uh, AVX, if you've read that, has a bunch of different artists as well. Uh, Avengers vs. X-Men, that event. Infinity has a bunch of different artists. So um, this is one where I think that they made the right decision in, in to delay the book because ultimately when history remembers this book, nobody's going to remember that unless you're reading it monthly at the time. And does it matter when you read it in a trade? Absolutely not. So what is Civil War? Well, this is the event basically that Captain America 3 Civil War was based on. Uh, this is a event where superhumans are want the government wants superhumans to register, and uh, there's a kickoff event that uh, causes the government to say, "Hey, wait a minute, maybe we need to have more um, visibility on these folks." You know, they're running around doing whatever they want, whatever they need, and uh, you know, they cause an accident. So issue number one happens a little bit differently than the movie. Like the movie comes out of what happens in Avengers: Age of Ultron. Um, where the Sokovia Accords come out in the Captain America Civil War movie. And really the only things that stay the same from Captain America Civil War and this book is that Cap and Iron Man are on opposing sides. This is the wraparound cover to issue number one here. Um, So they're on opposing sides. Tony's still pro-registration. Cap is still anti-registration here. And they're, they're battling each other throughout the book. Everything else that happens in that movie has nothing to do with what's in this book. There's no Bucky killing Tony's parents. There's no Spider-Man. Uh, you know, who's on what side is, is a little bit different, probably, if you had to go, like, pick one by one. And even then, you wouldn't get it exactly right because, um, you know, some characters weren't around in the Marvel Universe at the time or weren't as big or prolific or uh, weren't even included in here. So that's basically the only thing. is It's Cap versus Iron Man about the issue of superhuman registration working for S.H.I.E.L.D. So what happens in issue number one is there's a, the New Warriors is a young super team that is filming a reality show. And there is a, uh, I think it's written by Zeb Wells, there's a New Warriors series, a trade that collects those issues where they're filming this reality show. So it ties into stuff that was happening in the Marvel Universe at the time. It's not just something that Mark Millar made up. Um, So the leader is named Speedball, this guy right here. And he goes after these, these, him and his team go after this house of villains that they find. And one of these guys is named Nitro. He has the power to explode. They end up by a school bus, by a school, and he explodes. Bang, silhouettes of kids playing, you know, recess ball or whatever. And the town blows up. Kills like 600 people, 60 kids. It's a huge mess. And that's what spins the government into this we need to control the superheroes uh, mantra Uh, obviously you got cap who's very upset and cap just wants people to take some time to to realize what they're doing and uh you know and figure this out meanwhile iron man is all about you know we need to do this before the outlaw law us entirely need to get on the boat so that we can control and steer the boat uh instead of just trying to stop it from taking off altogether that's kind of where iron man's mindset is at um Got Spider-Man caught in the middle, as indicated by this cover. 
There's some pretty drastic Spider-Man stuff that happens at the end of issue number two in here. Uh, is this number two? Yeah. Which then got, you know, removed with one more day. Here's a little hint right here. Um, so there's about a year of Spider-Man stories after what happens in this book that takes place with the aftermath, and then it gets removed from one more day, and that's no longer an issue. Uh, even in the current Spider-Man run, like they kind of don't even reference that this happened at all. But when it happened in Civil War number two, man, oh my gosh, as the final page of that issue, uh, it was a big deal at the time because this is something you never saw coming. And that's what I love about Mark Millar's writing is that he finds a way to put events in his books that you never saw coming. Thor was missing at the time. He had been... Uh, you know, Ragnarok had happened at the end of Avengers Disassembled, that run, prior to the new Avengers book by Bendis coming out. So who pops up at the end of one issue? Bam! Thor! And you're like, where did Thor come from? And then Thor does some things that you don't think Thor would do! Uh, you know, and that provides a big moment and a big, you know, like, justification for characters to switch sides. Um, you've got betrayers, you've got villains in here that are that are acting, you know, working for S.H.I.E.L.D. because they need more pe super-powered people to fight Cap and his uh, resistance. You've got Stephen Strange on the outs. He's kind of just sitting the whole thing out like a pussy. Um, you know, you've got Hulkling doing Hulkling things. <laughs> it, it, it leads to, like, a huge battle, uh, which is, if you've seen Civil War... Uh, Captain America Civil War, you know this moment. Like, this moment was taken from this cover, basically. The Repulsors versus the Shield. Great moment. Great cover by Steve McNiven. Great colors, great inks, all that stuff. Um, but it the problem with Civil War, as good as it is, is it kind of ends with the, on a weird note. It ends almost on a whimper. Um, there's not really a resolution because one side wins over the other. It's more of a resolution because one side kind of gives up because there uh, too many things are going on. It's affecting too many other people that they're not intending it to affect. So the Marvel Universe, I remember after this, was really, really interesting. Post-Civil War, I think, was the most exciting time that I've been reading Marvel comics. I started picking up more books. I picked up, uh, there was this book called The Order by Matt Fraction about the super team in California. Um... I was picking up Miss Marvel at the time. I was picking up uh, Spider-Man and Wolverine. And, like, I don't remember ever picking up so many Marvel books as I was during the post-Civil War era. And this definitely affected relationships uh, with these characters like Cap, Iron Man, Thor. Those three, the, the, you know, the trio of the Avengers, as you would call them. I mean, that's who you have in Avengers, the Avengers movie, that first meetup when all three of those guys meet each other and fight each other in that in that movie that's that's the core of the avengers team right there to put a rift in between the those three much less cap and iron man it it ran through the marvel universe for years to come like through the next five years and it was all because of this event so to say that this event is insignificant or whatever is definitely a misstep i know most people don't really it seems like you know, as time has passed, most people don't reflect on this fondly, but maybe they haven't reread it in a while, because Civil War is a worthy read. It's a great reread, uh, and you will find yourself just flipping from page to page to page, because it is a definite superhero blockbuster story, and that is thanks to Mark Millar. There's also intrigue. You got the mutants in here, and, you know, sometimes that feels kind of superfluous, like, that really probably feeds into the Civil War X-Men ser miniseries that happened at the time. Um, but at the same time, it, it answers those questions of, hey, where are the mutants in this battle? Why isn't Cyclops and Storm involved? Um, Black Panther, where's he at? Uh, so this is really more of like an Avengers-centric story at the time because it, it pushed all these other groups out and just said, nope, this is our core cast, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, anybody kind of related to those people, that's who we want to deal with. Um, so really, really fun. So definitely recommend checking out Civil War. Get the collection. You can check out, there's a new Avengers uh, Civil War tie-in collection or whatever. Well, that was kind of fun. Bendis wasn't writing this event, even though he was like the main Avengers guy at the time. And he was um, doing 
like single issues he was spotlighting one character per issue during the, all these events that's fun but i do recommend you go read if you like this go read civil war frontline uh there's two trades i think that were out i don't know if they combined them or whatever but that's written by paul jenkins art by ramon box and steve lieber it follows speedball as he goes through his trial basically they try to hold him responsible for what happened to stanford and then it also follows these two reporters as they try and report on the different sides. you got one following Cap's side, the other following uh, Iron Man's side, and they're just trying to relate. So there's, there's other things that happen in Embedded, but it's not one of those books that you have to read to understand Civil War. You can just pick up this book by itself, read it, have a great time, have a blast, and go on from there. So if you do want to read more about maybe what other heroes were doing, you can go check out those tie-ins. But like I said in the beginning... This Civil War event is structured so well that you can just read the main book and get everything you really want out of it. And if you really want more, you can go get more, but you're not required to read anything else. So I really like this book. I recommend it. And I reread it now because I'm about to read uh, the Death of Captain America trade paperback. And the first couple issues in that thing are the Captain America Civil War tie-ins. And the reason Captain America dies is because of a lot of the things that he's doing in this book. So I wanted to reread it to get myself in the mind frame of what was happening in the, the Marvel Universe at the time uh, to read, you know, The Death of Captain America. So that's next up on the plate. So thank you guys for watching. As always, let me know what you think of Civil War down below in the comments. I love to read your comments and respond to them. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next time in the funny pages.